you know, there's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. Number 24 is Content Farms in Macedonia. Vidite kako se napravi greška. Ta ki vide kobna. Nema vraćanja nazad. So, Europe need to to remain more sexy pin sexy pull lady in the world. Ajde majkata. Gospodje čuva Macedonija i nizinite grajke. The war on Israel by the terror group Hamas continues, though now the Israelis have begun the ground war. The situation around the world is still quite tenuous with various Iranian-backed proxies either joining in the mayhem or threatening to, with the chief sponsor Iran threatening, essentially, World War III. Meanwhile, the masks are off around the world and the hatred of the Jewish people is on display and rising, especially in America and Europe. What is the reaction to all this, both in Macedonia and around the world? In other news, Macedonia stumbles towards elections, with Vomero arguing for a dual presidential and parliamentary election in May, early May, but not on Easter Sunday, as the ethnic Albanian Speaker of Parliament has suggested. We'll dis- discuss all of this and more in this episode of the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. I'm Jason Miko, coming to you from the foot of the Catalina Mountains in Oro Valley, Arizona. And this is Tvitin Shalimanov, uncomfortably close to the border of the... <laughs> Uh, Muslim world, Daro Al Islam, or what's it called in Muscovy, <laughs> Macedonia? Y- yes, 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 and yes. Um, yeah, the, the Macedonia's Muslim community, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I tend to forget a lot at my age. But mm. it's it's more conservative in its um, in its belief uh, of of Islam as opposed to say you know the Albanians in Kosovo who are a little more secular. I think. They are more outwardly Islamic uh, in the sense that they would have like women in the full umbrella covering and uh, uh, <laughs> men wearing the skull caps and going to yeah. prayers. Something that would be cringe, especially in South Albania, yeah. uh, somewhat in North Albania and uh, Kosovo, which are more Muslim. And uh, um, But uh, in Macedonia, our theory is that uh, while they are in a country where they're still a minority, they are more... Uh, trying to be more outwardly Islamic to show, you know, have the the muezzin, the the prayers broadcast mm-hmm. over loudspeakers a notch louder. Uh, mm. While once the you know once the war in Kosovo is over, once they they took the country and expelled the Serbs, and they're comfortable now, they're no longer need to be mobilized, and uh, you know they can just relax, and um, there is much less. Uh, visible display of uh, religion in uh, Albania and Kosovo. In- interesting, you you said that they've turned up the uh, volume a little bit because they use loudspeakers for the call to prayer, which I, or I have long argued, is a um, you could you can say, guys, no, you can't do that. It's a mm-hmm. it's a public nuisance, a sound issue, um, and, and it, so because of course they would claim it's religious discrimination, right wing. Mm-hmm. Christian zealots, you know, don't want us to have the call to prayer. No, it's 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 an issue of common decency, is what it is. But it's interesting that you mentioned they seem to have turned it up a notch. Our friend Chris Deliso, long long time um, resident of Macedonia, married to a Macedonian, uh, coined the term. I think he coined the term "sonic cleansing" yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a way of uh, driving uh, people, um, non-Muslims, out of neighborhoods by uh, by yeah. doing that. Um, they did turn and, it up a notch after Gaza. They're not doing okay. much uh, else. Yeah. There are no protests. They're super scared not to be seen as too Islamic now in the eyes of their Western backers, uh, in the eyes of the U.S. The, the, the Albanians, I guess, sense that the U.S. will support Israel through this. And they, uh, I think even Bibi uh, issued a tweet thanking the country. I think, I guess, those who voted uh, in the U.N. for, I don't know, I guess, return of the hostages without ceasefire some of those versions mm-hmm. and uh, or who abstained from I, I don't know for something and he has the US number one and then he goes by alphabetical order and Albania is number two mm. I noticed that Macedonia was under N not under M oh. because I guess we voted uh, the same way in this issue mm-hmm. but you know it's very interesting that Albania <laughs> ranks second there it, it is and as you mentioned yeah they, they're not <laughs> They don't want to be seen as pushing back against their chief sponsors, mainly yeah. the U.S. State Department. Um, 
Now, of course, the State Department and Joe Biden um, are, are having a hard time with their far left uh, progressive um, constituency, and, and that's mm. going to play out in the elections here in, well, next year, um, literally a year from today's the, today is the 6th of November, and this is episode 163 of the Macedonian Content Farmers podcast. I think the elections are on November 5 next year. We always hold our elections on a Tuesday. So, But even now you're seeing Rashida Tlaib, who is the only uh, ethnic Palestinian member of the United States Congress, uh, is, is threatening Joe Biden, um, and, and others are as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's going to eat into his support one way or another. Of course, then you've got Trump and his various trials and whatnot. But I don't want to get into the politics of, of all that now. But uh, yes, so the chief backers being the State Department uh, of the you know, ethnic Albanians in the region. Um, but still, the, the amount of, of, as I mentioned in the, in the monologue, Jew, hatred of Jews around the world is just mind-boggling. Uh, I, I did not expect that. For, for sure, the the amount of uh, the number of people coming out and and uh, you know, chanting the stupid stupid slogan from the river to the sea. Mm. Most people have no idea. Most people, well, maybe I'm being generous in saying most people might know it's the Mediterranean. Maybe most people don't, but certainly the majority mm. of people chanting that have no idea that we're talking about the Jordan River. And if you look at a map, and most people can't point to Israel on a map, but if you were to look at a map, and that would be basically calling for the eradication of the Jewish people, either killing them or forcing them off of their land. Uh, and I think it's worth pointing out, again, I think on our last podcast, we, I, I started going through a discourse on the history of Israel, starting with Abraham. Um, and, uh, it was a long and Isaac, <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob and the 12 tribes, uh, 12 sons of Jacob being the 12 tribes of Israel. But Jews have been on that land for 4,000 years. So it's not like that they're colonialists, as, our, as the stupid progressives talk about. Um, they've been there longer than these people. So Palestinians, by the way, Palestine, the word Palestine is a, is a, um, is a my understanding is that it was uh, uh, created by uh, Hadrian, the emperor, Roman mm -hmm. emperor Hadrian. Uh, and, and it, it, it has to me, I guess. I, don't know. It, it, I think it, it originally it, it has its roots with the Philistines, who were, mm -hmm. you know, if you, of course, the Philistines are famous for uh, David and Goliath. David slaying the Philistine giant Goliath uh, with a, his sling. Um, but anyway, uh, that's where the word Palestine comes from. Uh, Who's but David again, the here? Of... Who's Goliath in this situation? <laughs> we have oh, obviously well, know the Palestinians. They like to say that they're. Uh, using actual slingshots against Merkava battle tanks and that they are yeah. David and Israel is Goliath. But then if you look at the map, it's 6 million Israelis versus 300 million, exactly. just the Arab Muslims. And suddenly it comes, it shows up that it's not even the Arab Muslims who want to off them first, but it's now the Aryan uh, Persian Shia Muslims who, who want yes. to do the honors, not to mention additional Muslims if you go east. So they are really, I, 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 as the kids would say now, the, the math is not mathing. Uh, they yeah. don't really have the numbers, the Israelis, in this one. And uh, Yeah, uh, no, Israel is, is, is David, and Goliath is the, the Arab world, the Muslim world, the progressive world, <coughs> um, which is a lot of world. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it was Golda Meir, uh, the prime minister of Israel during the, the um, Yom Kippur War, Mm. said that if if Israel if if the Arabs lay down their arms there will be peace if the Israels Israelis yeah. lay down their arms there would be no Israel uh, and I think she's also credited with saying that you know there will be peace when the Arabs love their children more than they hate us mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and it's just so sad but the other the other thing in, in addition to the reaction of, of um, um, people around the world just hating on the Jews is the, and this relates to what we were talking about earlier with Macedonia's Muslim population, is the number of Muslims, especially in Europe, that are now openly claiming, mm. look, it's only a matter of time before we will take over and implement the caliphate or Sharia law or whatever yeah. in these countries. And there are still small populations in Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Sweden, etc. But they do, um, they do breed like rabbits and... Uh, mm. And and the and of course Europe is still importing them. Although I think 
people are starting to wake up. It's interesting, I, uh, Douglas Murray, the British author and intellectual, has been very mm -hmm. vocal in, in all of this, and, and he says that um, the, the cry, Allahu Akbar, has become basically a war cry. Uh, it, is, it is no longer, it's lost its religious connotations, and it's just, it's a, it's a, yep. it's a cry for war. And, of course, my response to that is I think all of these people that are crying Allahu Akbar can take their Allahus and shove them up their Akbars, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Um, but it, it's, it is dangerous, I think, and these people, and it's only a matter of time, I think, before we see terror attacks in the United States and more yeah. throughout yeah. Europe along the lines of what's happened in, in the past in both, uh, both places. Um, but... Uh, for now, as we, again, this is November 6th, the ground war started two weeks ago, roughly. Um, hostages are still being held hostage. Hamas can end this war anytime it wants to by simply releasing the hostages and, and laying down their arms, but they're not about to do that. Uh, and, and so no, They will try to test if the Israelis have lost their courage, if the, the numbers are not there, if they're now a, a TikTok army, you know, with the, mm. the TikTok girls. That, that's uh, not a very good strategy to show to the enemy that your army is made up of uh, cute girls who, whose main quality is dancing on uh, TikToks. So uh, they will, you know, I guess they, they decided it's time to give it a, another try, give it another go, and even if they lose this one, they they will still have the num numerical advantage, and uh, obviously the the world opinion is. Um, we'll see how it changes. I mean, the the West, uh, a lot of the urban West uh, started the academia, the students, you know, the know nothings. They started uh, going after Israel even before they started bombing Gaza. Obviously, just in the anticipation of what they will do. We'll we'll see how, how the public opinion changes. After a few terror attacks in Europe, yeah, uh, whether this will be even more like calling to Israel to, to stop bombing Gaza, so we uh, placate the the Muslims, or if there will be a counter reaction. Yes, well, well, yeah, well, this is gonna this is gonna go on a long time, and and we'll <clears throat> probably revisit this on each one of the upcoming uh, podcasts yeah. that we do. But but let's kind of pivot now to um, back to actual Macedonia news, which mm -hmm. is why probably most of our listeners tune in. Um, let's, and I want to hit a couple of things before we talk about the Kamal Pet uh, scandal, um, which you know much more about than I do. I saw it, I read something about it briefly the other day, but um, a couple of things I wanted to hit before that, and I didn't even mention this in our offline chat conversation. Um, Pablo, sorry, Gabri Gabriel Escobar, mm -hmm. um, the uh, EU, uh, EU, State Department um, Assistant Secretary, I think is his title, I've forgotten. He came out the other day and said that, uh, yes, the Bulgarians said that there are going to be no new conditions for, uh, for Macedonia's EU path. Um, and then if you, read, if you read the fine print, uh, <laughs> according to, it was a VOA interview I think he gave, and if you, if you read the, um, the readout of that, he said, that's the way I interpreted it, meaning what they told him. So that, doesn't, that means nothing. Um, although I see the Bulgarian media is out today with a whole bunch of <clears throat> articles stating that yeah, there will be no more, no more conditions once you change mm. your constitution. Of course, um, I don't believe that. No, at but all. we discussed this. I mean, that uh, the keyword here is new conditions because Zaev accepted a very mm. long list of conditions, including a rewriting Macedonian history books and actually implementing them in schools, uh, which he hasn't done. SDSM has not done this yet. Mm -hmm. uh, opening uh, poli secret police files, uh, which, you know, a general in principle support. But the angle here will be to focus on all the police files of people who were persecuted by the secret service as uh, the Yugoslav secret service as Bulgarian, uh, Bulgarians, Bulgarian sympathizers, mm. collaborators of the occupying Bulgarian forces is the usual um, designation. And uh, this was the you know, the mark of shame of anybody which the Yugoslav authorities wanted destroyed. And obviously Bulgaria will point out to this and say, in your own words, using your own police files, we now see that the entire elite of Macedonia, tens of thousands of people, both elite and normal, you know, family people, you know, farmers, etc., were Bulgarians. And now you're trying to hide this, you're trying to uh, un-Bulgarianize them. 
So these are the two big demands. Uh, and uh, and then the, just the adding the Bulgarian minority in the constitution opens up a whole no another range of requests, such as uh, fair representation in public administration, using the not the census, which put their number at 3,500, but the number of issued passports with the declared Bulgarian identity, which will put them at easily at 100, 150,000. Mm -hmm. Then uh, celebrating national holidays, um, funding for media outlets, uh, etc. There are additional demands which we see now, which are not in the treaty with Greece, for example, but Greece is now taking over the entire energy sector of Macedonia. We have more or less stopped digging coal in Pitola. We are importing coal from the Greek side of the border. Uh, we are giving them uh, uh, the large hydro plant, which is planned to be built uh, Chebren on the Tsarna River uh, between, near Kavadarci. Mm -hmm. We are um, signing a contract with them to build, uh, uh, to become our main suppliers of gas, I guess, American LNG gas or uh, Qatari Azeri gas to sup replace the Russian gas because Qatar and Azerbaijan and Libya are much nicer countries to be buying gas from, I guess. Uh, and uh, they will build uh, a gas plant in Skopje, so they will be taking over our entire energy sector. Uh, they have a lot of the banking sector, so Bulgaria will want, you know, stuff that were not that was not put in the contract but in, in the treaty which Zav signed, but which was often declared by their politicians. So there are a lot of demands that uh, uh, the government has, has agreed to and has not met, and Bulgaria can rightfully say that this is violation of the treaties, and uh, that's why they use the word no, no new demands. Right? right. Yeah, well, I hope that Vomero and Miskowski are talking about this, exactly what you said, that, that yeah, maybe there are no new demands, but there's plenty of old demands that haven't been fulfilled, and the, the Bulgarians are going to say, no, you have to fulfill these first, so as Macedonia marches towards elections. So <coughs> this is early November. Christmas is uh, mm. Christmas holidays are, are coming up, uh, New Year's, etc. Nothing gets done anywhere during that time. Looks like Vomero's dropped their demands for early elections, but they're still looking at dates. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at and May they don't, now. don't talk about Bulgaria much uh, anymore mm. because it's a, a, a largely settled. That's an issue that yeah. they will not budge, that they will not accept the demands. Even though uh, the government is now quickly today another uh, of the cases against Gruevsky collapsed, the one about oh. the demolition of a high-rise mm -hmm. building which uh, Fiat Zanovsky, a businessman, mm -hmm. built unlawfully. Uh, so there, there, there are a couple of cases against Gruevsky which collapsed so far. A large case against Mialkov, the the pivotal case, the, the wiretapping case actually mm -hmm. collapsed, uh, largely because of the statute of limitations, which was shortened by the changes in the right. criminal code, which was done by SDSM and Dewey. So practically, SDSM and Dewey are trying to empower a Gruevsky faction. They're trying to create a Gruevsky faction in Vumera, hoping that this faction will fight against Mitskovsky. <laughs> so uh, they're very cynically uh, mm -hmm. now acting to, to try to empower him. They may even offer him come back to, well, to Skopje. Yeah. This, this is what CNN did with Trump in 2015-16. Yeah, 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 oh, exactly. he's never going to make it, yes. so let's give him as much free airtime as, yes. as we want and as much as he wants, which is infinite. And yeah, uh, lo yeah, and behold, yeah. um, <laughs> it's beautiful. Elected, so. Beautiful. Yeah. So this so. is uh, so this is now the focus is here, and Vimmer is putting the focus on Dewey. Yeah. They're practically saying we don't even fight these fools in uh, is the SM. We beat them two to one, and, and according to most polls, yes, our opponent now is Dewey, and they keep uh, revealing new corruption scandals on the part of Dewey. Not only new corruption scandals, but then this piece of news from the other day of, mm. of uh, Ali Ahmeti with uh, his Greater Albania flag yep. at some, um, what is this, a museum, I believe, near Kumanovo? Uh, Kumanovo, yeah. Yeah, uh, dedicated to Albanians, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but it's got a big uh, marble plaque out front that has Uchika on it and a map mm. of Greater Albania. And apparently, according to the media reports I've read, that, that Ahmeti went there and bowed before it. 
So now, has he said anything publicly since this? No. No? Nobody has asked him yet. Uh, Nobody's asked him. So, what, what is wrong with the journalists <clears throat> there? Why aren't they asking him? I don't know. We had Buyer Osmani was asked about uh, a different situation where uh, Albanian football fans were chanting, uh, I don't know, we'll take Skopje, something like that. He addressed this, but not the museum. Mm -hmm. So the museum is built uh, in a village uh, just north of uh, Kumanovo on the border with Serbia, where uh, I didn't even know this, honestly. In uh, 1944, the, uh, about 60 Albanian sources say, about 60 villagers were killed by uh, partisan forces, obviously, mm -hmm. Macedonians, Serbians, um, from the neighboring village. Mm. And... Uh, they uh, had like a memorial house on the for the Ucheka and uh, pictures of Ahmeti there, pictures of other Ucheka fighters, and as you said, the plaque in front of the building with the map, which includes Skopje, includes obviously mm -hmm. whole of Kosovo, big chunks of Serbia, half of Montenegro, and a good chunk of uh, Greece. Mm -hmm. Of Macedonia, they take about half. Like Skopje is there, uh, you can't really tell, but I guess it's close. The border goes close to Vilas, and then. Uh, southwest to toward uh, Ohrid Bito. I think maybe even Bitola mm -hmm. is in the works. So this is similar to what we had uh, a few months ago when Albin Kurti was in uh, uh, Tetovo in Skopje, the Kosovo prime minister, and he was welcomed by thousands of people in Tetovo. It was organized by the mayor of Tetovo, Bilal Kasami, who is from the opposition Albanian party, Besa. He's not, he just formed a union of free Albanian parties, BESA, Alternative, and this new movement which split from DUI. And they, are, they got together and they're declaring a coalition to dethrone DUI. Mm. Uh, so they're the Albanian opposition in Macedonia. So, so, and they're trying to be close to Kurti, even though Kurti is in war with not just Edi Rama, the prime minister of Albania, but with the Western, most of the Western diplomats as well. Right. So uh, the op Albanian opposition is in Macedonia is courting a lot of trouble with the diplomats here, but they're hoping that the popular anti-corruption uh, and nationalist message that Kurti has will help them beat Dui. Uh, so when Kurti was in Tetova, there were people with signs, uh, with like f flag shaped uh, maps of greater Albania. They were waving this as flags during the, the rally with the word autochthonous, we are native to this land. Mm -hmm. While we Macedonians, have, as Andrzej, Zaf, we started giving away our history, we are obviously new and uh, just recently formed nation with no roots in this territory, while Albanians are seizing on this opportunity and they're saying, well, the Macedonians are imposters, here we are the autochthonous people of this country. This is, this is the same message that that everybody's talking about for the Palestinians in Gaza. So they're the, yeah, yeah. They've been there forever, and, and, and the Israelis are the uh, recently come uh, yeah. occupiers. So. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. And same by the way, Bessa, Bessa is the Islamist party in Macedonia. They, yeah, they're the ones who did the, the only rally in support of Gaza early after the, right. the attack. Uh, and But um, they're like Muslim Brotherhood aligned... Uh, Erdogan aligned group, uh, but uh, again, they're mostly campaigning on corruption issues yeah. and, much, and much less on, uh, oh, on yeah. this issue, which is uh, kind of, as I said, concerns the Albanians a little bit, that they may lose the American support and things can really go downhill for them. Right. So they had the display, so the Albanian opposition had a display of nationalism and then is the same people were loud and saying, look, we are, we have to deal with these people, look what the Albanian opposition is doing, Vumero wants to be in coalition with these people in the next government, Do is a much better option, uh, charges were filed against uh, the mayors of Chair and Skopje, where Kurti also visited, and Kasami in Tetova, for allowing this display. Uh, after a few months, I guess, after the guy fled the country and... Uh, uh, went back to Switzerland, charges were filed against one person who was waving the flag. Uh, and then and then now suddenly a few months later, it's Ahmeti doing the same thing, coming up with a 
map of greater Albania, much greater responsibility. He's in the government. Mm. He has been in the government for so long. He was actually a terrorist commander fighting for this outcome, not just a politician talking about it. And now the SDSM people are silent. There is no way they can file charges against Tahmiti because he's propping up their government. He's like uh, the pivotal person there in the... Uh, he's literally the senior coalition member now yeah. to SDSM. So, yeah, this is a very... And the internationalists are also... In all these people in the region who would talk always about Dodik in Bosnia, talking mm. about dividing Bosnia, mm. who were up in arms about the attack in Kosovo, which the Serbian, a Serbian group uh, organized, killed a policeman. Uh, and now, you know, we have the former terrorist commander, leader of the government in Macedonia, endorsing greater Albania and um, nothing, crickets. Huh. Well, you know, when, when these ideas are raised, especially at such high levels by prominent people and nothing is done to refute them, they mm. only grow. And I think that is probably what will happen here. Um, mm. Of course, ultimately, you know, we, we, could, we, could, we could get on a rabbit hole of a Huntingtonian discussion about uh, the late, great Samuel Huntington, praise be upon him, mm. uh, the class of civilizations and, and all that. Um, but for now, let's just kind of set that aside and, and hopefully somebody's going to condemn that. I mean, uh -huh. like, uh, but we'll see. Um, no, I mean, all, our only chance now is that, you know, we obviously not at this point, Macedonia firmly belongs in the Slavic Orthodox camp, if we're looking into mm. oh, yeah. this thing in Huntingtonian divisions. We're not obviously in the Western Anglo-American European led camp because we're not allowed to join. Ever, I mean, we were blocked every step of the way, but by previous members of this club, and but also we did not see the the U.S. the EU diplomats do much about it, and uh, we were attacked several times by the uh, group which was selected as the faithful allies of the Western camp in the Balkans, the Albanians, and we were compared to the Serbs, to the Russians, even though we wanted to belong in the West. Obviously, that ship has sailed and we will be now uh, lumped in with the obviously Russian-led uh, global grouping. Uh, what were they called in 1984? The, there were continents, were they called as armies, as, as, uh, as uh, countries, as states, zones? 1984, zone, oh, oh, in the book. Yeah, they called oh. them zones, right? Oh, oh man, I, I have not read that in decades so yeah. I cannot remember wow airstrip yeah. was the name for uh, england but uh, oh. uh okay obviously we'll be in the russian-led orthodox right. slavic zone and we'll be waiting for the outcome of the war in ukraine to see if there will be a shake-up of events in the balkans uh but meantime our main enemy uh, lasting for our territory the albanians mm. uh, they're obviously sunni muslim they can deny it as long as they want, but they belong to the uh, Dar al Islam zone. While their other their main supporters, who have been fulfilling every wish the Albanians had in the region, the U.S. and uh, uh, the U.K. and the uh, Brussels diplomats, the European countries, they may now be on the verge with the Islamic world, just as they were in. Uh, after t between 2001 and uh, I guess 2014, I guess mm. until the uh, Maidan uh, uh, colored revolution. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the period, the only period where Macedonians were allowed to elect a sovereignist Macedonian government, right wing government, uh, without too much interference from from American diplomats, until they got together and staged the colored revolution to topple the Gruevski government. So for a while, when the U.S. was in war with the Sunni Islam. We had our break. For a while, we were not in the focus of attention and uh, pressure from the U.S. So maybe if um, you know we we get to a hot war between uh, the West and uh, Islam, our zone, our in between civilization, I guess may get a chance to. You know, lick our wounds and uh, 
<laughs> maybe roll back some of our, the losses we have suffered. Well, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, actually, if we do, yeah. In the end, um, Israel wins. Uh, we could go. We, we as we talked about before we started recording, we could go down the the prophecy wormhole if we wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, is that a thing? Christ wins. So you're, you're evangelical Christian, right? Is Actually, no, I'm, I'm Macedonian Orthodox. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry, you're Orthodox, but, but you were. I, I, I was you... raised evangelical, yeah, yeah. so I, I know this stuff inside and out. Um, and, and this, that I, is a thing, that we will spark apocalypse with true Israel, the yeah. temple, the nukes. The... Yeah, exactly, yes. It, it, no, it's, it's how does it work? Well, <laughs> how, did, <laughs> how does it end? Um, yeah. So, I mean... Think about it. Just just from a practical standpoint, take a step back. Um, mm-hmm. Israel has been the focus of most of history, recorded human mm-hmm. history. I think, you know, uh, certainly since you know Abraham and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the twelve tribes, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and the, the Jews are God's chosen people. They claim it. Um, Christians believe it. Um, Muslims hate Jesus it. Jesus was Jewish, was born Jesus. Jewish. Was Ju- Jesus was Jewish. <laughs> you can't get more yeah. Jewish than Jesus. Um, uh, and and I said, as I said, Muslims hate the idea, I think, that, that the Jews are God's chosen people. And, and I think that's one reason why they have been hated so much by mm. the world, especially by the Muslim world, uh, as well as um, the left, you know, Look at Karl Marx, you know, the founder of, of communism, who himself was a Jew, a German Jew, but he was an atheist and he hated Jews. Yeah. He was a racist. Um, you can find that throughout his writings. Uh, but the, the Jews the Jews have always been hated. Um, and, of course, you know, Christianity comes out of Judaism. Jesus was a Jew, but um, he came and proclaimed to be actually the son of God, which is why the Pharisees, uh, which is one of the political parties in Israel at the time, hated him. Because uh, here he is, this this carpenter's son, mm-hmm. and a carpenter himself, claiming to be the son of God. Um, and, uh, of course, then Christianity comes out of that. And then the, the whole Western tradition, uh, including Macedonia, comes out of, of, of that. Uh, so amongst, going back to the evangelicals, and, and, and Christians, I mean, I wish, I do wish that the Macedonian Orthodox Church would talk a little bit more about prophecy and end times and things like that because they're too busy <laughs> picking sides do they work? is this bishop now we literally now have the serbian bishop back oh no uh, jovan and oh. he's out the gate uh uh talking about uh how the greeks are uh we should listen to them and uh, obviously the serbian church mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 a lost cause yeah. that, that organization but but going back so don't forget with islam the, the whole the, the one of the key tenets of Islam is as you were talking about at the very beginning is basically world domination, mm. and this is what their prophet Muhammad wanted and preached. Uh, he was a warrior. He literally killed people yeah, yeah. in battle. Um, he he advocated spreading Islam through the sword. I mean, it's kind of funny mm. if you if you look. I remember doing this years ago. I was looking at the Saudi Arabia. Uh, website for their Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the embassy in Washington, D.C., or in America, and the history of Islam. And it says, you know, Muhammad founded Islam, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then then it says, then the next line is, 100 years later, Islam was throughout, you know, most of Europe, or the Middle mm-hmm. East, etc. And it didn't say how. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. he killed everybody. And and this is the thing about Islam, is that you will... The, the su- message caught on. Really. <laughs> <laughs> caught on, right, yes. Um <laughs> George W. Bush was completely wrong when he said Islam means peace. No, Islam means yeah, submission. Of course, of course, of course. And the house of uh, the house of Islam and the Dar es Salaam and is, what was the other one? Um, but the thing about Islam is they believe that if if Muslims have been in a land, then that land, even if they're pushed out, is still Islamic and Muslim and will be again. Mm. So you look at Spain. The, the Moors were pushed out in 1492, I believe. They still believe it to be. Um, Muslim land, and they, and they want it back, yeah. Uh, yeah. and that is everywhere they are. And so this is there, there's an ultimate conflict brewing between Muslims and their supporters, and Christianity and Judaism, and it mm. all comes down to Israel because Israel is the site of of so many um, claims. Uh, so you've got you know the Dome of the Rock, which is where mm. yep. uh, both 
Jews and I believe Muslims believe that Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. Um, we don't need to go down that hole, but that's all, mm -hmm. it's also the place where the Muslims believe that Muhammad uh, was on his magical winged horse to Mecca or something like that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But it's also the site of the, Je the Jewish temple, which was destroyed in 70 AD yeah. by the Romans. So uh, that's what the Wailing Wall is. The Wailing Wall is the retaining wall of that, mm -hmm. that platform. I've been there. I've actually been at the Dome yeah. of the Rock and prayed. And, of course, you're not supposed to really? pray up there, but I have prayed there because, you know what? I can't. <laughs> you can pray anywhere. So <laughs> I'm American, uh, damn it. Exactly, yeah. I'm American Christian, so yeah. um, you can pray anywhere. So, And that is, the, that is a, a site, you know, holy to the Muslims. Uh, yeah. And it's the Alaska Mosque, which is not there at the Dome of the Rock. It's kind of off the side. Um, and then the Jewish and, and, and Christian, of course. So it's, it's the center of everything. And, you know, during this war, I think it's kind of fascinating that Hamas lobs these, these missiles that are not guided. Um, mm. I'm surprised, given the volume that they have launched, m multiple thousands, that one of them has not errantly hit the Dome of the Rock, which I, yeah. I, I still think it's going to happen. If Hamas doesn't do it, then Hezbollah will do it, um, even though they have but more... But then, uh, you know, if the... Well, then, um, then all hell breaks destroyed. Loose. Then uh, the rapture happens, or do they? Is it going to be like the uh, prediction of the nukes, which the well, there's the, there's the you gotta have the rebuilding of the temple. So um, uh, they have to build it again. Okay. The, the Jews want to rebuild the temple. Of course, the Muslims won't let them, and that's all. I don't know how that all plays <clears> out. <throat> yeah. The rapture. The idea of the rapture is an idea that is is you know, the word rapture doesn't occur in the Bible, in Old Testament, New Testament. Okay. It is it is an idea that caught on especially in the 1970s with the author Hal Lindsey in his book, The Late Great Planet Earth. Uh -huh. And it's a reading of, uh, I believe it's Thec 2 Thessalonians 4, I can't remember the exact verse, which talks about how there will be two workers in a field and one will be taken up and the other will be left behind. Now, mm -hmm. it is gone out of, it's not talked about so much anymore, but, but what is prominent to the New Testament is the second coming of Christ. So the first coming is, well, Jesus, you know, born on yeah. Christmas Day. Uh, then he, you know, lived a life, preached, crucified, rose again on the third day, coming again. Yeah. In that, um, Christians, whether they're evangelical, orthodox, or Catholic, or non-denominational, all believe that, or at least they should. Because that's, that's central <laughs> to the Christian faith. If, if Christ yeah. didn't rise again, there is no Christian faith. So, but the second coming, that is, that is when... You know, that's, that's different from the rapture. Um, and I, I don't, again, I don't think a lot of scholars still believe the rapture is something. But second coming is, is definite where Christians are taken back, mm -hmm. they're taken up and basically have the end of the world. Um, so that's, I, and I believe that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I th and I think yeah, the I mean, church, the Macedonian Orthodox Church teaches that as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure when they get around to actually doing exactly. their job, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. We still we support, for example, generally Macedonians would support Israel because of our experience with the Muslims here, and uh, um, uh, we w because I guess if we get down to discussing it, maybe because of the geopolitical reasons, which I outlined just before, that mm. we would like to see a break between the. Western dominant Western uh, uh, superpower and you know associated pow regional powers and Islam because we are literally losing our country right. to this to millstones which are grinding us mm. uh, and obviously we believe that the, our Slavic uh, Orthodox Christian part of the world belongs to the European civilization and. Uh, uh, has belonged before communism and should uh, return there and be take its rightful place in the European, uh, right? Euro, Euro North American, Euro American mm -hmm. civilization, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't. Uh, I don't. We don't have this narrative that uh, we should support Israel because uh, uh, of the rapture. But I can act, literally see this playing down. In a way that it looks very much like like rapture, if if nukes start to fly because of Israel, which is super likely to happen at this point. 
Yeah, it doesn't have to be nukes. Don't forget. I mean, you can you can still have a global war with without nukes. Yeah. Just be there's there's enough firepower in modern day conventional weapons to yeah. uh, replicate Hiroshima and Nagasaki multiple times over. No, but for the aesthetic of the of the <laughs> end of days. <laughs> but yeah, actually, yeah. Listen, yeah. yeah really, Israel can can kill much more Arabs with one strike at the Aswan Dam than uh, yeah. Yeah. by nuking uh, Tehran or Baghdad or yeah. Damascus or. By, by the yeah. way, you, you, you had a phrase there just a moment ago, which I, I perked up at. You said grinding between millstones. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if you know that. That's the, that's the title of um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn's uh, biography, Between Two Millstones. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't. Yes. Yeah, who I didn't. Is, <laughs> and, and, and I like saying it just for our friends at the U.S. Embassy that are listening. Um, <clears throat> uh-huh. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Yes. The, the, I consider to be the greatest writer of the 20th century, a Russian um, and his, between two millstones, he's referring to his time in exile in the United States, mostly in Vermont, where mm-hmm. he, the one millstone was the Soviet Union that was still yeah. allowed to destroy him. The other millstone was the, the corrupted West. Um, mm. Now, he still very much believed that, uh, you know, democracy writ large, of course, was the right answer. But he saw the corruption which was occurring, especially... Yeah in man in in western man's soul and he mm. said if you guys if you guys don't shape up you're going to become just like the communists yeah um uh, and that was that was his i think that was one of his prime messages uh when he and was, in many when ways he was, you're there like oh yeah definitely yeah well that i mean <laughs> and we're seeing it play out now on streets in america and europe this the decadent corrupt progressive west that thinks mm. that hamas are the good guys I mean, yeah. come on. Although, although it gets really fun. I've, I've been enjoying some of the videos on um, on the Twitters. Um, sorry, the X, mm. the, where um, you have progressives that are, um, you know, chanting their stupid chants and whatnot. And then they, then then queers for Palestine shows up, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. they say, uh, no. <laughs> and then they <laughs> then they get into it. So, uh, yeah. did, did you see those two guys who were? Uh... At, at, a third party appeared, I guess, in London at the protest. A guy who is wearing a billboard against trancing of children. He's, the billboard says, oh, "Don't yes, give yes. hormones to children." No. And two uh, white knights. Actually, one one was white, but one was, I guess, uh, more uh, Arab guy. Uh, men. They they masked the guys. They, yeah. they accosted the guy, and they're also looking at few. Levantine baddies who are also protesting Arab girls, and they want to raise them up, and they say like, "Can you believe this guy? Look at him! He wants to uh, <laughs> prevent children who are born in the wrong gender from asserting their rightful gender. They want to go from man to woman, and uh, that's their right." Literally, the the Judean People's Front skit from from uh, <laughs> yes. Monty Python, <laughs> and and these two, uh, these girls say, "Are you bonkers? Are you crazy? We don't we don't support that shit. Yes. Take your hormones." <laughs> and this guy with the billboard is in between, like, "Okay, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> it's beautiful." It is, yeah. Or as I alluded to, you know, early on, earlier in the podcast, the 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 fight that's coming on the far left here in America between Joe Biden yeah. and his supporters. It's beautiful. It's it beautiful. Is. The it's academia oh. uh, kids and the yeah. minority uh, kids and the blacks, obviously, they have their opinions of the Jews. And uh, then the middle class, upper middle class, uh, some of them Jewish, not maybe not all of them, but uh, uh, people who actually lead the Democratic Party are... <laughs> you know, yeah. in bit, now now practically in war with the with the voters with the voting base. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's been good to be see glorious. Jewish progressives wake up and say, "Hey, wait, <clears throat> these are not my friends." So, yeah, uh, we we were declared anti-Semites for pointing out that uh, whenever we have somebody like a think tanker guy here, like a diplomat, something come here and tell us is this is right, listen to them, the Colored Revolution, blah blah blah. And if you Google his name with Open Society or George Soros, we get a hit. Yeah. And we're called anti-Semites for this. Mm-hmm. And now we see that all these uh, crazies which Soros, his organization, has incubated in U.S. Mm-hmm. academia, has funded for decades, they're now literally going on the streets saying, death to the Jews. And, I mean, I, I just hope he's, uh, he still has enough of his senses to... To savor this moment, to, to realize what he has done. <laughs> yes. It's, it's yes. incredible. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's pivot. I, I see we're 
we're running about 45. Uh, no, we, 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 can, we can cut it here. We can... Uh, oh, okay. You want to uh, save? save um, yeah, we can leave it for okay. later. It's, well, we'll tease it. takes I mean, too much to explain. We, 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 let's, let's tease it because I, I think this, uh, <laughs> this is going to continue. Um, and we need, to, we need to up our games on, get up our game on doing this more often. Plenty of material out there, but uh, some of it's mm. Dinan, kind of that uh, the whole brouhaha there between. What's the, the give us the short the short version? Uh, well, it was uh, um, Kyle Pitt is the TV station which constantly changes its alliance. <laughs> uh, founded as Vimera, joined with SDSM, joined went back to Vimera. Now is with SDSM, but now apparently wants to go back to Vimera, and uh, uh, they. Uh, I'm not sure if they planned it or if it just happened, uh, because there are many idiots involved in this story, mm. including the manager of Canal Pit, but they had an Albanian guy and uh, uh, who kind of insulted them, but not too much. They kicked him off the show. It was not a big deal, but it's being made into a very big deal, and it's very emblematic of uh, where we stand politically with mm. uh, how SDSM and the think tanks and the organizations aligned with them, are so desperate to get the Albanian vote now. So they're actually attacking one of the most important TV stations, which supports them at the moment, uh, as Macedonian nationalist, uh, just to show up as the white knights to the Albanians. We support you, we're with you, we're with you. Vimura is bad, Vimura does not like you. Yeah. But it's a lot of moving uh, uh, pieces, but also very interesting in that it was a perfect uh, storm in a teacup, uh, capturing all these moments with um, how low SDSM has gone uh, with the um, with its dependence on the Albanian voters and how uh, powerful the Albanian politicians have come. Mm. But we can leave it for the next episode. Yeah. It will okay. be. Yeah, it'll. I think it's going to continue to percolate there. So. Yeah. All right, good. Well, this is a good wrap. We, we covered a lot of ground here. So, um, and uh, the war in the Middle East is going to continue, and uh, we're going to get closer yeah. to elections and the mayhem, and we'll get closer to our elections, and so the, the chaos continues. Yeah, guys, uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun in the coming period. Yeah, we don't know. All right, good catching up with this, Sven. Yeah, you too, buddy. Take, Take care. care.